Monday YouTube, this is SDL0320 representing JVS. I'm here for a spoiler filled review for the second season of Gotham. This is episode, I believe, 19. The name of this episode is Ezra. If you've not seen this episode yet, take this, put it in your watch data because I'm about to go into a lot of spoilers, alright? So, this episode to me, I gave it a 9 out of 10, but the thing about it is like, I don't know, it, it was really strange. Because the episode starts off right where it left off. Where basically you find out that Hugo Strange conquered it. He was able to bring Ezreal or Theo Gallivant back to life, right? And when you first see the beginning of the episode, like, he is all scatterbrained. There's death everywhere. Like, blood all the place. He's, like, smearing blood stains. Basically, the way that um, Hugo Strange describes it, he's got one part of his memory that is kind of know who he is and is so scattered because of the lost memories he's becoming volatile and then the other part is he's memorized this whole different genealogy from him from uh i forgot the name of his uh where he hails from but either way there's a whole book that he's memorized and he's taking up all these different kind of personas he's trying to understand them now hugo does the smart thing and the dumb thing of giving him a specific purpose and telling him who he is and using it towards his own means because all honesty, unbeknownst to him, Gordon and Bruce have already brought and pieced things together that the philosopher is Hugo Strange, the one who was working with his dad, the one that started all this stuff, Indian Hill, and everything that's being done under the surface is all being brought full circle. And so Gordon was going there, and I love that actual little interrogation because they were going off of each other, but long story short, um, Hugo Strange was not willing to allow Gordon to live through that. So he was like, you know what? This is your target. This is the man I want you to take out. And he gives him a sword. He gives him all this kind of gear. And I'll say one thing that they did really get right. I mean, the way that Ezreal moved, the way that he fought, the way that they really couldn't stop him. I was like, I feel Batman in the presence of all this. I mean, even like there were certain moments where I was like, they got this better than a lot of different movies. Because from the shadows and moving around and cinematography standpoint, they did a good job. Like, they really did as good a TV show as ever done with showing Batman without giving us actual Batman. That's what I can really say. That's the reason why I kind of pushed this to a nine. Even though from a, a fan standpoint, that's not Ezreal's, like, persona. That's not his, that's not who Ezreal is, period. Matter of fact, like, they've skewed the whole uh, background and the canon of all that, but it is what it is because to meet this mode of this show, things have to be changed, such as Edward Nigma. Like, he's working and thriving with the insane people. <laughs> and, like, he's just from the first part of this episode or first episode of the season to now, he's just this psychopath. That's, that's really rushed from a lot of standpoint. If you want to judge the show from a from a, um, a series standpoint, that's a really rushed job, but it fits from an entertainment X value. And that's what this, this show is really all about. It's always pushing the envelope and entertaining. And that's, that, that, that does that. There's no question about that. It's just from a continuity standpoint and from a pacing standpoint, they rush into stuff, but it works. Some kind of way they have these actors that can just pull it off, you know? And um, it's, it's interesting to see him Barbara and Penguin just kind of like losing it like slowly they're just deteriorating as people even Barbara I was like dang she's all jacked up but uh Nigma he um works together with these insane people and he finds a way of basically kind of getting out and on top of getting out he actually goes and finds the secret to Indian Hill now my theory with that I really feel like he's gonna find um Fish Mooney body i think he's gonna find um whoever the persona is gonna be for mad hatter i think he's also gonna find um the girl that's gonna be uh what's the flamethrower person firefly i think that's gonna happen and i think they're gonna save um jerome for last the reason why i say all this is because the fact is that theo gallivant or not theo gallivant but um Hugo Strange is understood by giving Theo like a purpose and a specific name and a categorization, it allows his psychosis to focus. And basically that's how he knows he can be able to control him. And so he was sitting there reading like pages of Alice in Wonderland, and I was like, this is gonna be the Mad Hatter. This is where he's platforming it. 
the same as I think they can do if they bring like fish or somebody else back like Jerome is get them a specific purpose that caters to who they are becoming. And I mean, it's the perfect platform to bring Jerome and Fish back. And I think that is gonna happen. Now, what that means for the show, epic stuff. I mean, personally, I mean, shoot, like bring me back a Jerome that doesn't know who he is, what he is, and has no backstory, and it seamlessly seems as though he's a normal kid. I think that that'd be perfect. <laughs> it would be perfect. <laughs> But um, then what, I, I forgot to talk about the actual story arc. So towards the end, basically, Barnes is trying to protect Gordon, keeping him locked up. I knew it wasn't going to last. There was this epic sequence that happens at the police station. And Theo is like putting them through the ringer, essentially. And um, basically, he kills all of the cops. And then he corners Barnes. And then all of a sudden, he breaks the, the sword. And on top of that, like, Theo is going through these different memories of who he was. But, um, Barnes gets stabbed, man. It's pretty messed up. I was worried they were going to kill him. But thankfully, they put him on a stretcher. Normally with shows like this, they show when the person's dead. Barnes gone through it. Like, didn't he get shot one time before and get hurt in the leg? And, uh, he's still keeping chugging. That's, that's Big Mackie for you right there. Um, but, uh, thankfully, Gordon had this shotgun. He shotgunned him out. But the dude fell. And still got back up. I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> They're not going to generally stop him. They're going to have to contain his mind in some kind of capacity and then lock him up. So it's going to be interesting to see how they try to actually subdue this guy. And the thing about it is seeing Bruce watching, it was like, this is what I have to be at least to protect my city because this is as worse as it's gotten. So... That's a really good trigger and a good nudge. It's definitely not canon. It's definitely not the mythos of Batman. But for this world, it really works. So it's going to be interesting to see where they go with it. But I did give the episode, like I said, a 9 out of 10. Hopefully you enjoyed this full field review for Gotham's episode 19, Ezreal. Keep it locked. JVS, we're going to stop. Peace, y'all.